Miss Janmina Slider. Miss Slider being said that they will achieve glory, dignity, honor, fame, and respect in the country. But the innocent young men believe it. They give their valuable life, die, and die without know, knowing anything. But the war mongers will enjoy all instead of them. So Stephen Green mocks the war as follows. Great is the battle god and his kingdom. In ancient times, when people were with lust, the war was held with the name of the god. Uh, they create the war, created a war for uh, created war for a war and a kingdom. Here the poet in a sarcastic manner says it because the war must be redeemed and protected, but here in his kingdom is full of dead bodies of the soldiers. Uh, so it, um, next the poet uh, considers about a small babe. So uh, the soldier is in a trench, came and pledged himself to be saved from the enemies, but the enemy shot him at his chest and he died unable to breathe. Now this babe is an orphan from the, that day onwards. There is nobody to give him the paternal love and care hereafter. The poet looks at this pathetic babe and sarcastically says, do not wave, babe, for war is kind. The third victim that the poet speaks about is a mother. The third victim that the poet speaks of is a mother who had lost her son in the war. The untimely death of the son had made this mother so lonely and helpless. The son she raised and on whom she had so many hopes on is no more. The mother's heart is in the alliteration. Heart hung humble as a button. is very emotional and shows that the mother's heart is broken. Her heart, which had borne so many dreams about her son, has lost its importance and it's just like button on the dead son prone to trees. The booming trunks, blazing flakes, uh, eagle with Crest red and gold, encourage the soldiers either to drill or die. These are killed soldiers are expected to either to kill the enemy or get killed by the enemy. Soldiers are induced, instigated, or brainwashed to the maximum in some ways. So they get a thirst to fight. Battle is taken as a service to God. The battlefield is the God's kingdom. So the soldiers are enthusiastic, confident, and motivated that they would win. Soldiers consider their task divine and they fight and die in the God's kingdom. It's true that most of the young men are attracted to war because of their love for adventures. Young men are very energetic. Um, dynamic and efficient. So it's natural that they are eagerly waiting for an opportunity to release their vigor. Most of the physically healthy youth enlist in the army and they are ready to fight in the battlefield. They, they are war mongers, ambitious rulers, and insensitive, bloodthirsty military officers who use them as pawns of the game of war. War is also a dirty, profitable business for some rulers. Some need for war, their political service, and carrying out their political agendas. Thus, the whole wild political power and military power thing that young people were born to till and die. The poet further conveys the message that war is a curse not only for the people fighting in the war, but also for their family members, friends, and the entire fabric of the social system. Mothers lost their loving sons, children lost their loving fathers, wives become widow, and young girls get frustrated losing their lovers. The country also loses the younger generation, the backbone of the nation. Thus, the poet teaches the words, do not be war is kind ironically and sarcastically to convey the ill effects of war such as untimely death, frustration, hopelessness, broken families, helpless widows, fatherless, child, uh, fatherless children, depraved youth, etc. Thank you. Thank you, Ajina, for your wonderful explanation. Now I call Damayindi to talk about the poem Once Upon Time. Good evening to you all. Today I'm talk, uh, going to talk about the poem Once Upon a Time by Gabriel O'Cara. Gabriel O'Cara was 
uh, was a Nigerian poet and a novelist. Um, this is the poem with 43 lines and seven stanzas. The poem is uh, father is telling the, um, about his feelings toward the most modern society to his son. The main themes of the poem are um, appearance versus reality, uh, fake expression of uh, society and the innocent childhood against the adulthood. In the first stanza, this narrator uh, promotes how people used to laugh uh, versus how people laugh now. Uh, the people used to laugh truly uh, with their eyes and heart, but now they only laugh with their teeth. Uh, by the word uh, ice block called eyes, um, shows the eyes when people meet others. Then uh, eyes don't have feelings when they meet others. In the second stanza, speaker for most other people uh, shake their hands versus now how they shake their hands. They uh, shake their hands by their with their hearts, but now they uh, shake hands with their heart. Uh, uh, it shows, and while they uh, shake hands, their left uh, hands touch his uh, empty pocket. Uh, shows the fake relationship with, uh, between each other. Uh, in the third stanza, narrator promotes we use the social formula uh, like uh, feel at home, glad to see you, come again for um, show of our simplicity and honesty. Um, but if uh, once, twice, and there will be no thrice, uh, for then he find uh, door shuts on him uh, shows uh, the different picture how in the modern society the sense of hospitality has gone. Uh, in the next stanza, speaker speaks about how people change their facial exp expression in different places, and he also mentioned that he uh, also learned to wear uh, many faces like dresses um, and. Uh, he says that people smile like a fixed portrait smile is shows that uh, pe if people not truly happy when they meet us, but uh, they gave a smile, like, uh, smile to us. And in the sixth stanza, he promotes how he changed uh, like others. And he says that he is also living with the muting things. And he also only laugh with the, his teeth and shake hands with our heart and uh, say glad to see you um, without being glad and say and it's been nice talking to you uh, without being after being bored and uh, say goodbye when he actually mean good riddance and in the next stanza um, shows his feelings about his fake uh, for expression to others and he's feeling guilty for uh, his um, fake expressions, uh, which are he's give, uh, showing to others. And he just want to uh, show the genuine feelings to others. Um, he, and he says that he want to unlearn all the muting things. And he just want to relearn how to laugh um, with heart and eyes, how he used to do. And in the last stanza, he asked his son to show him a smile, um, how he used to laugh when he was a child. And the, by the line, um, once upon a time when I was like you, shows um, the, the speaker promotes by the line, uh, the theme of the poem, um, innocent childhood against the adulthood. The poet appreciates the early social values. Um, it was with the humanity and the uh, society have value for uh, true feelings and humanity but now everything has changed in the modern society they are give value for money and non-living things and and the poet hates the fake traditional and culture uh, of 
the modern society and he tells that the uh, modern society people forgot what is hospitality and humanity the main theme is appearance versus reality or fake feeling the poet modern says the modern society use a social formula as uh, they had used in the past for example um, they don't smile truly but they uh, smile uh, fakely with their teeth only uh, the poet uh, tells about the, how african people have changed to the western culture and he takes him as an example to childhood and adulthood changes and the whole men, uh, poem mentions that the childhood can be innocence and it goes on original value the poem um, flows in a slow pace and the poet uh, uses repetition simile and caution to for uh, maintain a um, sense of deliberateness throughout the poem uh, he addresses um, his son but he's uh, speaking uh, with his uh, with absence of his son uh, in a personal monologue and he in, in the whole poem it's presented in a first person narrating um, and here the poet used the irony and sarcastic for example he say glad to um, see you when he actually mean good riddance like that and in the beginning of the poem a poet starts with the um starts with the uh, negative tone and in the um uh, end of the poem he uh, uh, speaks in a positive tone uh, thank you thank you yamindi for your wonderful explanation now we go we will say to talk about the prose dawr attack i give the side to we will say Lahore attack. Uh, Lahore attack comes under the prose passage. It's an extract from the uh, Kumar Sangakkara lecture delivered on 5th of July 2011 at Lodz. Uh, let's see about Kumar Sangakkara. Kumar Sangakkara, who is the world class cricketer, best known as Kumar Sangakkara, is one of Sri Lanka's leading cricketer. He has received international recognition and acclamation. He was born on 27th October 1977 in Mathala Kandi. He is a left-hand batsman. Not only as a top order batsman, he used to play as the wicket keeper too. He has been ranked as the number one Test, man, test batsman in the world several times during his career. Sangakkara was one of the most important members of the team that was won the 2014 World Cup T20. Being a multilingual and fluent speaker of English, it was a very eloquent speech pack with emotionally charged experience expressions. At the end of his speech, he received a standing ovation at the home of cricket. Uh, as he stunned the audience by his speech, he records his memory what happened in Pakistan that day. How does the response of that day of him and the team player? He recalling 50 minutes in that arena and his love of his people and the patriotism for his country. Sports are not only for play for entertainment and uh, physical. There are many things after that. And people admired and interviewed by cricketers because cricketers have the balanced personality. This is showing the strength of people and love by people. In the first line, narrator saying, that he was a lucky person. Even though Sri Lanka is a battlefield in that time, he didn't face any harsh situation in his first hand. And in Sri Lanka, I faced many problems and people died, injured, 
and face a battlefield. In Sri Lanka, the bomb blast all over, and people died, injured, and face a battlefield. Uma Kanga Sasangakara hasn't in those days in that time or period. The people who go to work and get essential goods are injured and killed. Here, narrator saying that the people are innocent. It's an accident because of terrorism and battle. In Colombo, apart from the war, it becomes a privilege. The narrator, uh, he used the adjective occasional as bomb and the experience of bomb attacks however they are even adjective occasionals occur some literary critics even there is a single attack is take out many harm things even one people is killed it affect heavily because the death is not of animals it is a death of human being the true message given by narrator is people in northern place the people face many problems such as death and enjoy, but in Colombo, the people have no hard experiences. The people in Colombo have a good luxury lifestyle. And since they were uh, we in different places, it is normal situation in Western and some places, people in Northern Central Province also face harm situation. The Colombo, other people have geographical distance, so they have less torture uh, because it is our mother country. The people face murder, kill, and fight. And in this situation, students uh, focus on education, and the narrator played cricket without any disturbance. In here, writer explained the situation of other parts of the country, people, or the soldiers who defending their mother's countries. Of this reason, they put them into hard situation. For their survival, they use shells, bullets, guns, mines, and grenades to survive. The narrator did not miss the experience with that experience. And he, uh, he respect the people who defending, and he is also have compassion and sympathy. The narrative saying the situation is out of control and the people are also out of control. In the case, he is helpless and he is only saying sympathy and promise. Then he record how his people face the problems and violence experience in Pakistan 2019. They are getting ready for the bus arrive and they are anticipating a day of hotel for the bowlers. In other he here, it is saying the humorous nature of the cricketers because they are balanced personality. There is a simile, simile, the gun bullets are coming as firecrackers. The reaction of the cricketer is immediately, they light everyone on one another, one another, another. Bullet come like the rain shower on tin food. Here is the sound effect is described by the narrator and in next line, narrator saying a tension situation because the bus is dancing and the nobody can move. So here the cricket have less security. When the bullets go into the bus, they stay calm and quiet. This is showing the cricketers vulnerability and vulnerability example. Even they are, even they are innocent, they should innocent terrorist terrorist shoot the terrorism not count the innocent because of this most of the innocent people died by terrorism thank you thank you bb Sain, for your wonderful explanation now i call that they are to talk about the poem once upon a time good evening all of you once upon a time was written by Gabriel Ocara. Once Upon a Time is a free verse poem that focuses on a father's attitude to cultural change and time passed before the incoming Western culture affected the native African way of life. In the poem, the man addresses the son, telling him in a rather nostalgic manner how things used to be. 
people were different back then, more genuine it seemed. And that is what the speaker would like to do now, return to a restored world. If he can only learn from the youngster. Back then, people weren't after your money. They could look you in the eye and smile real smiles. But nowadays, although the smiling teeth are on show and they shake your hand, all, all they want to know is your financial status. And so the poem progresses the early stanzas, revealing more of negative changes that have occurred during the father's lifetime. He is old enough to have watched decent human standards drop to the wayside as Western ideal gradually took over. The speaker wants to relearn from the as yet untamed some how long, how to laugh mm. and to be genuine again. It's rather a pathetic failure coming from the adult to the youngster. For, for what can the son rea uh, realistically do? Can the clocks be put back? Can an ancient culture be retired? from the overwhelming modern culture. Uh, the themes are how society changes cultural shift, capitalism and values. Perhaps the tone is ironic. Perhaps uh, the speaker knows deep uh, inside that he'll never regain that purity, that he won't be able to turn back time and relieve life as a transformed person. That's why the title could be from a fairy tale. The speaker's wishes are a fantasy. Gabriel Okara is considered to be one of the first modern African poets born in Nigeria. He uses folklore, religion, might, and social issues to explore tradition and transition. His work first appeared in the magazines Black Orpheus from 1957. If we see the first stanza, uh, the first line suggests that this poem is going to be based on a story, a kind of fairy tale. The speaker is addressing his son, so this could well be a father be beginning to explain how this used to be, how people they used to laugh with their hearts and eyes back in past. It contrasts nowadays, laughter is more of a show of feet and the eyes are called and looking for something other than real person. So already the present is being judged by the past and, and from what we can gather from these first six lines. The speaker prefers the attitudes mm. of the people from the past. There is a, there's the feeling that negative change is here. In the second stanza, the art of the shaking hands has also changed. In the past, a greeting was genuine, a person welcome for who they were. But nowadays, people shake hands uh, with one eye or your status, your financial status. People are no longer genuinely warm towards others. People are on the make wanting to get something from you. Uh, the third stanza, uh, people invite you round to their homes, making out as if you are important to them. But if you don't measure up socially, or your status isn't quite right, you are not invited again. Uh, the the alienation continues. People nowadays are artificial and fickle because of the change in culture. In the fourth stanza, the first three stanzas outline uh, the speaker's precipitation of changing culture and attitudes and values in his country. The fourth stanza describes 
how the speaker himself had to change and learn in order to comply. Uh, he uses a comparison faces to dresses to highlight the various person, personas he took on, all the while smiling. The repeated use of the face affixed to various places and situations is highly visual. In the fifth sense, uh, he also has become adept at the heartless handshake and hollow toothless smile. Plus, he knows how to devise people, deceive people with his travels and welcomes false politics. Basically, he is saying that he has become an integral part of his new culture. It has been quite an uh, education for him. In the sixth stanza, but he is not happy being a conformist. He wants to regain a former innocence the youngster still holds. He wants no part of this new culture and all these mul muting things. Uh, that word muting means to uh, deaden in this context. What he wants most is to be able to laugh in innocence again. He likens uh, himself to shake to a snake, his teeth, uh, told something toxic when danger, even dangerous. In, uh, to laugh in innocence again. Um, in seventh stanza, he comes clean. He wants the sun to show him how to regain this lost innocence and true identify, identity, how to laugh and smile like in the old days when he was young and carefree and the culture encouraged openness and honesty. Thank you for listening. That was a wonderful explanation, Vadia. Thank you for your participating. Now we call Dave again to talk about the poem that he is watching. The Slava Simboska is a well known poet in the poor land and she received her international recognition when she won the Nobel uh, Prize for the Literature uh, in 1996. And uh, Zimboska uh, spent most of her life in the Great Corps and she studied uh, Polish literature and uh, social studies and she worked as a editor and uh, worked as an editor and uh, and she a uh, terrorist is watching is a poet poem which is narrated in the first person omnipresent omnipresent point of view it explores the anticipation of a real life uh, terrorist bombing. And the uh, narrator uses uh, the countdown technique throughout the poem. The, uh, the first and the second stanza summarizes, uh, the, summarizes the event, summarizes the situation uh, where a bomb is uh, set and to be explored in the bar and the bomb is explored to be explored at the bar and the uh, most probably the partner of the terrorist uh, explores the event from a safe distance by using alliteration in the word in the word 1320, the narrator emphasizes the scene 
uh, with the countdown technique, the introduction creates uh, suspense in the reader's mind, understand, understanding that uh, there will be a bomb blast uh, and uh, they, are, they are going to uh, be more deaths. A narrator is viewing the uh, situation incident as a, a movie scene. This shows uh, the, his mental condition, void of uh, humanity. The use of simple language is a suggest, suggestive for uh, the simplicity of the activity for the terrorist as a professional, but uh, it, it is a shocking, it generates a shocking effect between the reader's uh, mind. In the, uh, in the third stanza, the, view, the point of the view, the point of the view of the terrorist is shown here. Uh, the, and the use of the first person narration brings the real time view of the bomb blast uh, and the people in the bar. And further from, from the narrator, simple uh, tone of voice, uh, uh, the readers can understand the mindset of uh, uh, his crime that he has, he is going to commit. Uh, his counting people and uh, counting time uh, increases the suspense and uh, 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 the readers uh, feel uh, the readers uh, feel he or she in the in that same place at the, the same scene the description of the people evoke sympathy in uh, our minds uh, which is about the innocent people who have no idea about the big bomb blast. In the fourth stanza, narrators, uh, for, uh, narrator is further zooming uh, in, focusing the girl with the green ribbon. She may be a school student, a school student, and she may be a young girl. Uh, his counting down uh, technique uh, deepens the suspense and deepens the interest. And the narrator and the reader have lost uh, the girl when a uh, bus uh, comes and cover her from, uh, and she has gone away from narrator's and reader's view. And uh, the, sin, the phrase, uh, we'll, when we'll see them, when they carry them out, uh, show, reveals the tragedy and uh, shows uh, and brings the fear to the reader's mind. And no one knows what has uh, happened to the uh, young girl. Zooming in further, uh, the ill fate, uh, ill fate of a fat bald man who is going into the bar at the last minute, engage uh, uh, readers to close uh, their ears uh, with both hands. This shows the, the uh, impermanence of the life. And the last stanza shows uh, the last, uh, and the last stanza shows the larger picture and the, rest, the narrator's restless waiting is going to be uh, over. And finally, the bomb explodes. The innocent people inside the bar uh, is going to die. And the tragic situation uh, is uh, described here very well. Thank you.
Thank you, Dave, again for your wonderful explanation. Now I call Manian to talk about the poem, The Huntsman. Good evening, everybody. I am today. I am going to talk about the poem "The Huntsman," which is written by Edward Lowbury. Edward Lowbury is a Br British poet. Uh, when he was living in Kenya, he used to refer to many Kenyan folklore folklore tales. From that uh, folklore tales, he uh, took the this poem "Huntsman." It is also based on the Kenyan folklore. Uh, this poem is uh, based on a, a hunter, a brave hunter called Kagwa. Uh, it so it gives us a moral value. The speak speech is silent, and silence is gold. Uh, and the themes of these poems are uh, ignorance versus reality, ruling nature, and the dynamic power. Uh, the first times are the poet tells us the about the hunter Kagwa, who is uh, uh, recently hunted the lion and went through the bushes and forest. His pair is personified here with the verb went. One day when he was uh, going to hunt in the uh, forest, thick forest, he found a skull of a man. It is very irony that he is spoke to a, a dead skull of a man as how did you come here? The direct speech uh, uh, indicates the unrealized uh, idea in the poem. Uh, and uh, Beacon uh, thinks that he is very sus surprised to see a skull of a man. So he asked the question, how did you come here? But suddenly it is very puzzled that the skull opened its mouth and said, talking brought me here. Uh, we know that talking uh, brought me is a moral value in this poem, but the uh, huntsman is not as wise, uh, wise enough. So he uh, didn't talk to the skull anymore, uh, didn't ask any more details about the skull and hurried home to, to talk about the stalking skull to the family. Uh, then he went to the chink's chair and spoke. We, we can uh, figure it out with things that the uh, family of the Kagwa will told Kagwa to see the king to get reward for this mysterious uh, to found a skull uh, with um, the stalking skull because it is a mysterious thing. Uh, in the for uh, she uh, told the kings in the forest, I found a talking skull. The sentence of the Kagwa is very short here, but the king then say, was very silent and said slowly. The slowly indicates he is not that much interested in the uh, talking skull. Uh, the uh, lines of the uh, King indicates he is very wise and intelligent because he used many uh, a long word in a single sentence. Never since I was born of my mother have I have I seen or heard a, a skull which spokes. It indicates that he is not uh, believe in belief of a hunter. So he called out his guards and told them to find the uh, stalking skull. If there is 